record button. Okay. And so um, people, I hope, can see that recording is on. Um, let's just wait, I guess, one more minute. Oh, Luxembourg. Yes. Do you have any interactions with Massimiliano there um, or his whole uh, I, I know him. We are. Uh, I'm in the group of Adolfo del Campo, so we are okay. next door, basically, with uh, Massimiliano. Yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of interactions with uh, Massi mm -hmm. over the years. Okay. I visited Luxembourg two, just before the pandemic, I guess. Okay. All right. Um, uh, let's get going then. So, hello, everybody. Um, so this, uh, I guess it's afternoon for you. It's still way early for me. Um, this time of the rotation of the planet, um, uh, we will start with a uh, presentation by uh, Nicoletta Caraba up at uh, University of um, Luxembourg. And um, uh, take it away, uh, Nicoletta. It's all yours. OK, thank you. I share the screen. Let's see if uh, everything goes. Sorry, I have to. Uh, I have to. I have to. Uh, I assume it should just. I was, it's asking me to uh, unlock some uh, uh, screen. Uh, yeah, your co host. So. Yes, I, I think it's uh, something with the. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I think it's, I think it's something with the. Um, Oh, with no uh, with uh, my, yes, with my computer. Uh, oh, with your computer. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Share the screen because I've never. Uh, maybe the desktop. Let's see if the desk opens. I oh, know it's 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 my yes it's my Zoom. Um, I need to pre preferences. Uh, share screen. Um, share desktop. Uh, I don't know why it does not allow me. Okay, I just ask support, so to speak. Um, okay, let's, uh, I will try again. Let's see. The message that I sorry, the, uh, open system preferences, I open system preferences. Okay, unfortunately, the um, System support at the ICTP is now left. Because um, I, know, I also sent, yes, I sent them the slides. I don't know if there is. Have you given a, a Zoom talk before? N no. <laughs> no I, oh dear. I... Oh dear. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Um, system, what kind of a system are you on, a Mac? Yes. And um... Under system preferences, you might need to give Zoom access might under accessibility. Okay, service service preferences. If uh, anybody considers themselves a, a Mac expert with Zoom, please chime in. I am certainly not one. I uh, so somebody wrote. You may need to change the permissions and restart Zoom. Uh, yeah. Oh, Under okay. permissions in the accessibility, you got to add Zoom. And then accessibility of Zoom, I, I have uh, so it's in preferences, Ac uh, accessibility, okay. Yes, and in there, um, there's some, you need to add Zoom. Uh, but here I am the system preferences of, of Zoom, but I should, ah, sh okay, I should go on the one of the Mac. Oh, yeah, you go in the system preferences. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, Zoom's preferences are not called systems preferences. I don't. Uh, think. Okay. Uh, system preferences and um, and and then I I don't find the I don't find the uh, Zoom between. No, so no, I, no. Oh, yeah, you need to add it. You need to add it. So there's a little plus button, or at least my. I did not upgrade to the most recent Mac OS. 
And uh, sorry, but uh, I cannot see how to add it. Uh, should be a little plus button. I think you should add it in the security and uh, privacy section of uh, system preferences. Okay. Yes. So let's see. And uh, and here, I don't see. Uh, I don't, there is no zoom here. Is there an add button, a plus button in the bottom? That yeah, it should be. Yeah. Exactly. No, there is a, there is a, about location and ser service preferences. Okay, but uh, there is no add, uh, at, at least uh, I this don't see a any. little plus, a little plus. Yes, I don't little... see any plus. Uh, I to make change. Ah, okay, there is a lock maybe, okay. Yeah, yeah, you need to do the lock to be able to get in to change anything. Unlock. And then you use your password. Yes, but okay, still in enable locations, I, I don't have Zoom listed. I have uh, Microsoft Teams. I have. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's, not, it's not location. It's. Go to a screen recording. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, unlock it again. You should push the unlock button. Screen recording and okay, Zoom. Uh -huh. You need to unlock the, the unlock button in the bottom of. Okay, the, okay. I think uh, I made it, and I have leave and uh, and I have to leave and uh, join again. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks for it. <laughs> of course. I'm hoping that in GPT 6.5 will actually be able to help us do audiovisual conferences successfully. That's how we'll know it's a true super a superhuman intelligence AI. She's got her screen, and now we just need her. In your Zoom, make sure that you've got your voice and image turned on. We cannot see or hear you. Sorry. Okay, Sorry. No so now go to share screen. That was working. Yes, before. yes. Yes. Here okay. It is. Um, All right, we're good you should go. also see me, but. Uh, uh, yes, we do. Okay. You're a, um, a person off to the side. Okay. Um, I don't mind um, uh, when the Nobel Committee is deciding whether to give you the prize or not, they won't really pay too much attention to this particular problem. Uh, okay, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry for this. It's the first time that I share my screen on Zoom. No <laughs> and, yeah. Okay, and yeah. then. Yeah. Okay, so um, the floor start. is yours. We've eaten up a bit of time, so let's actually try to keep it on schedule. Would it be okay yes. for you? If yes, you yes, it, it will be okay. Time? Maybe, maybe uh, I will. Uh, yes, maybe I will leave five minutes for questions. Some, something like this would be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, like, I, I, will, I will try to be as quick as possible, maybe skipping something. And uh, so um, good afternoon, everyone. I just would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to give this talk instead of um, my supervisor, Adolfo Del Campo, who unfortunately uh, could not attend. I'm Nicoletta Carabba, his PhD student, and this is our group at the University of Luxembourg. And I will be presenting uh, some recent work uh, made uh, with Adolfo that uh, tries to answer uh, these general questions. So first, what is the fundamental time scale uh, of a physical process? And this question can be addressed uh, rigorously uh, in the framework of quantum speed limit. That will be the, the main object of this, uh, of this presentation. And then also how complex uh, is a given quantum evolution? And in particular, how do we define complexity? There are several approaches to, to quantum complexity. One could, for example, look at the evolution of quantum states 
but here we would rather focus on the evolution of, of observables. And this, this approach is, is, um, is known as operator growth. So this is the outline of the presentation. Uh, first, I will present uh, our two first uh, quantum speed limit for operators and discuss uh, applications to correlation functions, dynamical susceptibilities, and feature information. And uh, then I will present a different kind of speed limit um, that is uh, called a dispersion bound uh, on, on Krill of complexity, which is a measure of uh, operator growth that I will uh, define later. And finally, we'll present uh, an additional quantum speed limit for operators uh, that, is, um, that has a geometric uh, interpretation. And I will also make a, com a, a comparison with the dispersion bound on of complexity. So first, uh, a brief introduction to quantum speed limits. They, um, they were first introduced by uh, Mandelstam and Tam in, uh, in 1945. And uh, first for orthogonal evolution. So a quantum speed limit is a lower bound on the time needed for, uh, for an evolution um, to occur from a given initial state to a final state. And um, by uh, giving this bound, uh, one provides also a new understanding of uh, the energy time uncertainty principle. So according to this view, uh, the, this delta T involved in, in the uncertainty principle, uh, rather than being an, an uncertainty over a measurement of time, is really the interval of time uh, in which the, this evolution occurs. And uh, uh, this, this time is bounded in terms of the energy fluctuations. So this is uh, the quant Mandelstam time quantum speed limit for arbitrary angles between the initial and final state. A second kind of uh, quantum speed limit was introduced by Margulis and Levitin. And uh, instead of, uh, as a time scale of the dynamics, uh, instead of the energy fluctuation, it, um, it, it, it contains the energy mean. Now, in um, our first work, uh, we have extended this, uh, these results to the evolution of operators uh, in the Eisenberg picture. And uh, these are uh, our two results. And in particular, the role of, um, of the Hamiltonian here is taken uh, by the Liouvillian that is uh, defined as the commutator with the Hamiltonian and generates the evolution of the operators. Here we use a formalism in which we vectorize uh, operators and uh, the inner product uh, between uh, the, the, the two um, vectorized operators is given by the Hilbert-Schmidt uh, inner product. So here the, we, we see that we have two different uh, characteristic time scales. Uh, identified by variance of the Liouvillian and, and the mean. And so we, we refer to them as Mar Mandelstam Tam and Margolus Levitin type of quantum speed limit for operators. And uh, these two results uh, can be applied to the study of um, uh, autocorrelation functions, of, uh, so two point uh, correlation function um, of, of an operator O. And in particular, uh, these two results that I presented. Uh, identify a, a crossover uh, in the decay of the symmetric part of the autocorrelation function. So here uh, we illustrate this crossover for a two-level system uh, and um, a random matrix. So in, in a first, uh, in a first uh, regime, we have um, a, a, a quadratic decay, well captured by uh, the Mandelstam tam type uh, of bound. And uh, success, um, subsequently, after after a crossover time, there is a time window in which the decay becomes linear in time, and it's uh, better described uh, um, by, by the, the Mar margulus levitin type of quantum speed limit. And finally, in the lower panel, you can see also uh, some results on, uh, on, the, um, on the initial onset of the imaginary part of the autocorrelation function, which is zero uh, at time equal to zero, and it's the anti-symmetric contribution uh, to the autocorrelation function. And this can be bounded, in this case, upper bounded by um, margulus levitin type of bound. And uh, this is particularly useful um, because it allows also to connect with uh, um, dynamical susceptibilities. In fact, this correlation function enters uh, um, the linear response uh, of a system under a perturbation. So in this setting, uh, an initial Hamiltonian is perturbed with a time-dependent driving. And to characterize the response of the system, one can look at the shift uh, in the expectation value uh, caused by the, the perturbation. And at the linear order in the perturbation, 
uh, this, is, this can be expressed in terms of the uh, so-called dynamical susceptibility, which is proportional uh, to the anti-symmetric uh, correlation function between the observable of interest and uh, the perturbation operator, computed at, at equilibrium. Uh, we have provided three bounds on this quantity. Uh, the first two um, descend from um, standard uh, operator uh, inequality, uh, such as the Eisenberg uncertainty relation, and the Bogolubov inequality um, when, when rho is a thermal Gibbs state. And, uh, um, but also in the case in which A is equal to V, so we study the response uh, in, the, in the perturbation operator itself, uh, we can also apply the quantum speed limit approach uh, to derive an, an additional bound. And the important difference is that now we have a non-trivial dependence on, on the time, because here uh, you can see that uh, the, the, the bound behave like a theta function, while in the quantum speed limit bound, we have a linear time dependence that expresses the fact that the response occurs with a certain delay with respect to the perturbation. And also makes, uh, makes this result tighter at early times. So this... Uh, this bound, we have computed them uh, in um, two different systems to, to give an example, uh, a, a, a system of particles in a, an electric field that is externally perturbed and also um, a spin system uh, in, a, in a magnetic field. So these are two typical examples of uh, quantum linear response theory and uh, the, the corresponding um, uh, susceptibilities, the electrical conductivity and the magnetic susceptibility can be uh, constrained by, by these bounds right, that I've shown. Also, uh, these bounds can be used to give a constraint on um, Fisher information. Fisher information quantifies uh, the state distingu distinguishability uh, under the transformation uh, generated by a certain observable O. And uh, it is important in metrology uh, because it constrains uh, the precision with which uh, uh, the parameter theta of, uh, the, of, this, of this transformation can be measured. Uh, and this constraint is, is the quantum version of the kramer rao bound. And uh, here m is the, the number of uh, independent measurements. Now, uh, this important quantity, Fisher information, uh, was found to be related by, uh, to, the, to the Fourier transform of the, of the dynamical susceptibility of the corresponding operator O in a paper by Aoki in 2016. So we can use our bounds to try to provide a constraint on the efficient information uh, at when, is, uh, when the, the system is at thermal equilibrium. But after performing the integral over omega, we find that mm, this, this, uh, this integral has a singular behavior near time equal to zero. And, um, and it, so in particular, this function uh, diverges like one over t, and therefore, uh, the Eisenberg and Bogolubov bounds on, on the um, antisymmetric uh, correlation function uh, provide a, a divergent uh, result. While uh, the quantum speed limit approach, by introducing um, a linear time dependence, remove, uh, removes this uh, divergence. And so we, we obtain a, a finite constraint on the thermal Fisher information in terms of the temperature of the system and uh, the, this characteristic uh, margulus levity in, uh, in time scale. So this was uh, the first part. Now let me move on to this uh, second part of the presentation, where I will discuss uh, operator growth in Krylov space and uh, um, a, a bound on, on, on complexity. Now, uh, again, we have in mind the evolution of an observable in the Eisenberg picture. And uh, by formally solving uh, the Eisenberg equation, uh, one uh, can realize that the, 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 um, the evolution of the operator can be uh, expanded in terms of the uh, powers of the Liouvillean, that are the nested commutators uh, with the Hamiltonian. So the, the span of this uh, set of, um, of uh, nested commutators is what we call the Krylov space. So it's uh, the minimal subspace uh, that contains the uh, full um, unitary evolution of the operator O. Now, um, in general, um, from, from this infinite uh, set, one can extract um, an orthonormal basis, which can also be finite, and typically it, it is finite in a finite system. 
through um, a procedure that is called uh, Langsus algorithm, and it's a, uh, it, it's a generalization of Gram Schmidt procedure. So um, from, with this algorithm, we, we, we can extract an orthonormal basis. And the important property of this procedure is that at each uh, step, one generates the next um, orthogonal vectors only by using the two preceding elements of the basis. Then one has to normalize uh, uh, the new vector. And the normalization factors that one obtains are known as Langsus coefficients and are important to characterize the, the complexity of the evolution. So uh, after um, defining this uh, discrete of basis, uh, what we discover is that uh, um, the uh, operator growth has been mapped uh, to a hopping problem on a one-dimensional uh, chain, where each site um, of the chain corresponds to one element of the curve of basis. The effective uh, Hamiltonian of this problem is uh, the Liouville and takes this uh, characteristic three-diagonal form, where uh, we have uh, the Langsos coefficients on the upper and lower diagonals, and therefore they play the role of uh, hopping uh, parameter in this um, on this uh, between adi adjacent sites. So uh, from here you can see that uh, uh, the curve of basis is actually ordered in, in complexity in the sense that. Uh, by, by acting with uh, far more and more commutator with the Hamiltonian, one increases the, the complexity of the initial operator. For example, if you think on a many body lattice, uh, you increase the size of the operator by acting with a commutator with an Hamiltonian. Therefore, uh, what, what we have is that uh, the farther we, we go from, from the origin, the, the higher uh, the complexity in some sense, intuitively. And so one defines creel of complexity as the, the mean position of the operator uh, over this chain. And uh, so the, formally, it's the expectation value with respect to the evolving operate, operator, evolving observable, um, of, a, of, a, of a super operator in kilo space that, uh, that is uh, the, the position in kilo, uh, on this kilo chain. Now, this definition was uh, proposed by, um, in this uh, work by Parker in 2019. And then um, many, many, many works on kill of complexity uh, came out, also motiv motivated by, by the hope that kill of complexity could provide a new understanding of uh, quantum chaos. Thanks to this conjecture um, presented in this paper, that uh, in maximally chaotic system, mm, that we have a maximal growth of complexity. And I will comment uh, on this uh, later. Now, another work that is uh, important for what follows uh, is this work uh, by Caputa and others, uh, Geometry of Kilo Complexity, that uh, contains the observation that uh, this, um, this Louvillian can be written uh, as, a, as a sum of uh, ladder operators on the Kilo chain. So uh, we have a raising uh, operator uh, that has uh, um, zero on, this, uh, on the lower part. And, uh, and a lower uh, lowering operator, and they respectively uh, allow to move farther uh, or backwards uh, in the curl of chain. And this reminds a lot about uh, um, the representation, group representation in standard quantum mechanics, uh, such as the harmonic oscillator. So one can uh, wonder uh, when, in which circumstances, uh, these ladder operators form a, a, an algebra that is called complexity algebra. What happens if this operator uh, close an algebra is that the curl of basis um, is, it becomes a, um, a representation of the complexity algebra and the, the, evolve, the evolving observable uh, follows the trajectory of a generalized coherent state of the algebra because the, the unitary time evolution uh, is formally equivalent to the displacement operator that generates uh, coherent states. And coherent states are typically known to, to satisfy minimum uncertainty relation. And we, we, we kind of confirm this intuition by formulating um, a bound uh, on the complexity rate, this, uh, this that we call the dispersion bound, that comes from, arises from an Eisenberg-Robertson uh, uncertainty relation. So from this uncertainty relation, one can um, establish this upper bound on the rate of growth in terms of the variance of the kill of complexity and the variance of the Liouvillian, uh, which reduces to this um, V1. And uh, what we have uh, proved is that uh, in the case of complexity algebra, so when there is this uh, coherent state uh, evolution, uh, this bound is saturated. 
So uh, complexity grows at, at the maximal speed limit. Instead, in the absence of this, uh, of this uh, symmetric structure of kill of space, uh, we, we observe a deviation from, uh, from this speed limit, in particular in uh, numerical simulations with uh, random matrix theory. So this is, uh, this is the explicit uh, form of the algebra. Uh, the generators of the algebra are, uh, so the Deleuvillian, uh, this, uh, this uh, operator B, and the commutator between the two of them. And so basically we have, um, we have um, this is the possible closure of the algebra, and the, then the explicit form depends on, on the sign of this parameter alpha. And so we have three different scenarios uh, uh, of saturation of the speed limit. And I just want to observe that for positive alpha, um, the, the complexity algebra reduces to the, the one of the special linear group. And one can compute uh, that complexity grows exponentially. And this is the case of uh, the maximally chaotic systems uh, of, uh, of, of this conjecture. While um, in the case of negative alpha, we have a periodic um, oscillation of uh, complexity. This is because the Krill of lattice is finite in this case, so we, we cannot have uh, an indefinite growth. And, uh, um, and I just want to, to mention before moving on that uh, this uh, complexity algebra uh, can be realized even by integrable systems, and for example, by, by a qubit. So this is to, to say that um, in order to saturate this uh, speed limit on complexity, we don't we don't need um, we don't need the, the presence of chaos. So now let me move on to the uh, final part of the presentation, where I would like to present this um, geometric um, quantum speed limit for operators. So the the geometric argument that allows uh, to derive this uh, speed limit uh, um, is similar to the one used for standard quantum speed limits. And uh, uh, basically, uh, the, the operator, uh, since the, the, the evolution is unitary, uh, it lies on the, 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 the trajectory lies on the surface of a sphere in operator space. And therefore, uh, one, uh, one can see that uh, the length of the trajectory uh, connecting the initial and final operator uh, must be uh, greater or equal uh, to the geodesic curve that connects the two points. And uh, on the sphere, the geodesic is given by the, the great circle. And so by rearranging this uh, inequality, uh, one gets a, a quantum speed limit, a geometric quantum speed limit on uh, the operator evolution. And um, th this, um, this quantum speed limit has a denominator, the, the, geode the geodesic, and at the denominator, uh, the average velocity of, uh, of the operator flow, which is defined in terms of the of the variance of the Liouvillian. So we can, um, we can talk about a Mandelstam-Tan type of uh, quantum speed limit. And we need a uh, finite dimensional Hilbert space to apply this argument. So um, now let me discuss a simple example of um, saturation that uh, is uh, um, the case of a two-level operator um, interpolating between uh, two energy level of a time-independent Hamiltonian. So in this case, one can compute everything um, exactly, and one discovers that uh, this inequality reduces to an identity at every time. So uh, the, the operator quantum speed limit is identically saturated. And uh, this uh, example uh, contains the intuition that uh, the operator dynamics uh, um, is geodesic, so it saturates the, the quantum speed limit uh, when confined to two energy alien spaces. And this can be shown um, rigorously, uh, and we have we have shown it, uh, we have proved it uh, in this work uh, that after um, that, if the operator has support in only two energy spaces, after subtracting the stationary component that I will now define, we get uh, saturation. So um, the stationary component is the the component of the operator along uh, the zero eigenspace of the Liouvillian. Uh, because what happens is that uh, the operator, uh, uh, the trajectory is contained in three Liouville eigenspaces corresponding to eigenvalue plus and minus omega, where omega is the energy gap of the two energy levels, and zero is uh, yes the zero eigenvalue. Now, the, the component along this, uh, the, the kernel of the Liouvillian is not evolving, um, and so it, uh, but it does not co contribute dynamically to the flow and actually prevents uh, from uh, following the, the geodesic. 
but after removing this, uh, this component, uh, we get saturation. So I think I will skip this uh, example. Uh, here I, I, I was giving um, an example of a saturation of, um, of this quantum speed limit by, um, by an operator, uh, about, by an Hamiltonian flow. So uh, a flow of, um, of Hamiltonians and uh, one can construct an explicit uh, uh, solution to the flow that saturates the, uh, the, the, the quantum speed limit. So this was to give an example uh, beyond the, the time independent, uh, the case of time independent generator. But- uh, yeah. Just so you know, Nicoletta, you've got 15 minutes. So if you want to- Okay. Um, through some of this, you, you have the, the time to. Right now, there's only one question pending in the chat. So up to you. Okay, maybe I will try just, yes, to, to mention um, quickly, yes, that um, uh, one, one, one um, relevant application uh, is given by uh, the case of Hamiltonian flows. For example, the one proposed by Wegner uh, in 1994 as a method of diagonalization of, um, of, the, of the Hamiltonian. So in this, in this case, we are looking at uh, um, the, 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 the operator that is undergoing the unitary flow is the Hamiltonian itself of the system. And the parameter is not time, it's, a, it's a, an arbitrary parameter that we call L. And uh, um, at the end, um, one, one can, de can define a, a unitary flow where at the end of the flow, uh, the Hamiltonian uh, is diagonalized. So the, the off-diagonal component is unitarily suppressed. And uh, um, an example of, of, this, um, of this flow is given by this uh, choice of the generator, which is um, different from, from the one propo initially proposed by Wegener, but this is the one uh, that we studied. And uh, here uh, we have, uh, with this choice of the generator, we have that um, by taking, for example, uh, the Hamiltonian of an XY spin model, the couplings uh, of the model obey uh, Toda equations. And um, we have used the, the, these equations uh, to construct an, an explicit solution of the flow uh, that saturates the, the quantum speed limit. So the evolution of the Hamiltonian um, is, is geodesic and um, and this uh, this of course uh, with by choosing um, specifically the initial conditions of the Hamiltonian and this is this so provides an example in which the the parameter of uh, sorry the um, the generator of the flow explicitly uh, depends on the on the parameter but still we can uh, we can reach uh, saturation so as as a um, last uh, application um, of the quantum speed limit uh, i would like to consider again krilov complexity so um, in order to apply the, 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 the operator quantum speed limit to Krilov complexity, we need to switch again uh, representation. So um, uh, before I define Krilov complexity as the expectation value uh, with a Krilov com uh, with, uh, of a Krilov complexity super operator with respect to um, the evolving observable. Now I, I switch representation and I keep the observable fix uh, while evolving only the, the, the super operator. And we call this super isomeric picture. And the unitary flow of this uh, operator in flow space is uh, generated by the commutator with the Liouville-Ligand. Now, uh, one can apply the operator quantum speed limit to this uh, unitary flow. And uh, the main message here is that uh, in the case of complexity algebra, so um, just to... Um, when we have these uh, commutation relations, uh, what happens is that the dynamics is extremely simplified by the presence of these commutation relations. Because every time that I take a commutator with the, the Liouvillian, I, I, I can apply the commutation relations. And so the, the infinite set of the nested commutator uh, with the Liouvillian reduces to only three uh, super operator. The identity, um, the, Krilo, the initial Krilov complexity, and this operator B um, that generates the complexity algebra. So this means that the evolution is contained into a three-dimensional space. And since the identity is among uh, these, these, uh, these operators, there is a, a stationary component. And this means that after subtracting the stationary component, uh, we must obtain saturation. We must obtain a geodesic flow. And this, we checked it explicitly. First, uh, uh, by computing the, the, the quantum speed limit uh, without subtracting any stationary component. 
So here are the details of the computation. So uh, here you can see explicitly that the, this, uh, these nested commutators, these powers of the generator S uh, reduces only to three superoperators. And then in the case of the um, uh, SU2 complexity algebra, which is the, the only final dimensional case, uh, we, we can compute the, the quantum speed limit explicitly and uh, what we find is that, uh, as I as I anticipated, uh, there is a, there is a, a deviation from the from the geodesic trajectory from the quantum speed limit. So this is uh, uh, the, the autocorrelation function here, and uh, it's compared to a geodesic trajectory. And here is the you can see the deviation from the quantum speed limit, and this is due to the presence of a stationary component, which is necessarily non-zero. Uh, because we, because the trace uh, is non-zero, so there is a non-zero component along the identity. Uh, so in principle, there could be also more stationary component, but what we find is that by subtracting the component along the identity, uh, we actually obtain a, a fine, um, sorry, um, um, a geodesic uh, trajectory. So we obtain saturation of the quantum speed limit. And this means that uh, the stationary component is, is minimal in, in some sense. It's given by uh, the component along the identity. And uh, it confirms the, the, the argument that I gave at the beginning that the, the evolution uh, is geodesic. So uh, both quantus, the quantum speed limit and the dispersion bound at, are saturated at the same time. So now uh, here are the conclusion. I, I presented uh, two different kinds of uh, operator quantum speed limits uh, of a mandres tam, tam and margulus levitin type, respectively, that identify a crossover uh, in the initial decay of uh, symmetric autocorrelation functions. And uh, uh, thanks to the, this quantum speed limit approach, I also provided bounds on dynamical susceptibilities and uh, Fisher information. And finally, I, I discussed uh, uh, operator growth in Kilo space and uh, the saturation of the dispersion bound on the, on the rate uh, of complexity in the case of complexity algebra. And, uh, and also um, I discussed the, this uh, additional uh, quantum speed limit for operators with a geometric interpretation. And I discussed the, the equivalence uh, between the saturation of this quantum speed limit and the saturation of the dispersion bound on uh, kill of complexity. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. We have a um, little bit of time left. Thanks for the um, dealing with all the technical problems, especially Nicoletta. Um, so the main thing we have so far is in the chat, um, Vladimir um, uh, Viegas. Um, are you, if you're still there, Vladimir, um, uh, could you? Uh, uh, yes, I'm here. Yeah. yeah, my question is that, uh, did I get it right? The, the the upper limit of or rather the limit of these things are due to a certain uh, for something that is parallel to the uncertainty principle am i getting it right for example the conductivity that's why it has a limit because it follows something like an uncertainty principle yes because am I um, getting it right? Uh, mm, yes, yes, because, yes. Uh, actually, uh, the, among, for example, on the transport coefficients, yes, um, the, among the, the three bounds, one was really coming from an uncertainty principle uh, because um, I didn't try the uncertainty principle actually, but here you have this, uh, um, the expectation value of, uh, of this uh, commutator and uh, this uh, and this is bounded by by the variance of the two operator and this is the generalized uncertainty principle so if you take uh, position and momentum you you get the, the, the standard uncertainty principle but so you can apply uncertainty principle to 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 bound correlation out uh, correlation functions between operators uh, okay, yeah, okay. follow up uh, if that is then well for example if position is the momentum then what is like the pair of uh, the conductivity um so here uh conductivity is defined for 
for a specific choice of the operator. So, so uh, here in this example, for example, uh, the external perturbation couples with the dipole moment, uh, this R, and, um, and the observable of interest, so um, uh, what we call here A, is, is the, car the current. And for this choice, so for this choice of operators, uh, um, the dynamical susceptibility is, uh, is, is what we define the electrical conductivity. So, uh, so I, I don't know if this cl cl clarifies the, the issue. Yeah, I got that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, next up, um, uh, Olga, you got your hand up? Yes. Uh, thank you, Nicoleta, for the great talk. Um, so I have a sort of naive question. You were introducing these two, the first two speed limits, and there is these original ones that are, if I understand correctly, one is like sort of in a uh, Schrodinger picture and one is sort of in the Heisenberg picture. So are they equivalent? Can you go from one to the other or are they like sort of different bounds? Uh, they they are not equivalent, uh, but they um, sorry, uh, what is this? So um, one can see that, uh, for example, if you if you um, as, as an operator, if you choose a projector of a of a over a, a pure state, then actually you can recast this this quantum spin limit in the Schrodinger picture, and um, but you find something that is proportional to the original bounds, but it's not exactly the same. So they are they are not they are not they are not equivalent. But uh, since uh, um, we, you, you 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 then you get um, you get this the same time scale. So you you, you get uh, Mandelstam time and Margulis Levitt in time scale. And you get a um, two uh, a quantum limit that is proportional to the to the standard one. We we, we called it a generalized. Um, we, we call we call this generalization of Mandelstam time and Regulus lab in two operators. But it's true that they're not equivalent. So have you compared the tightness of each of them in the case that they in, when they can be compared? Yeah. So they they are not tight uh, over states. Uh, since uh, they are they are proportional, but with a um, with a smaller than one uh, coefficient, and uh, uh, yeah, so one of the issue with the first uh, work it was really tightness, which is kind of solved with the geometric approach. Uh, typically, the, these bounds gives uh, give a tight description uh, at, at, at small times, but but not but um, as far as we know, not not later. And uh, so this is also one of the motivation for looking at a different kind of, um, of quantum speed limit. So yes, this typically describes early time uh, dynamics. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you, so, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I've got then, if there are no others, a, a quick question, we've only got a couple of minutes. Um, obviously you've not yet had time to think about it, but I was just curious, whether any of these kinds of um, uh, extensions slash modifications of the quantum speed limits, if you have any intuition about how that might be relevant for the kinds of speed limits for information processing that were discussed earlier today, which is all about changing sets of qubits um, from one particular state to another one, formalizing that as um, uh, information um, processing. Um, is uh, anything occur to you, or just this is something? No. Just... Well, I, I don't. I don't think I have um, um, a good precise answer. Yes, of course. Yes, I think that uh, in general, quantum um, information processing is a as an is an important application of quantum speed limit. So. Um, Especially, especially maybe the the, the last one, the, the one that is tight, uh, that is can be, can be shown to be tight. So the geometric quantum speed limit maybe could could say something interesting. Uh, if if one could formulate, uh, I, I'm not sure how one could formulate the, uh, this these processes in terms of uh, um, operator growth rather than uh, uh, states uh, evolution of states, but but. Uh, but I, I think that uh, it could be, of course, uh, uh, an important application. But uh, we, I, I, I don't have anything more to say on this. Okay, great. Um, it looks like there are no other questions. So thank you very much, um, especially given the 
technical challenges. I'm putting you on the spot. Yes, I'm sorry for the uh, for the oh, permission. No worries. Yeah, this. So I I I stopped the sharing. Okay. Yeah, and then um, uh, Eric.